Hello and welcome back to the Metchball Grid. My name is Andre. And I'm Patrick. And thanks so much for tuning in. Pat, we are back at our Roots Tabletop Netrunner in 2023. I feel like it's been a minute. It's been a, a long, long time since we recorded commentary on these recorded Netrunner games. I'm excited. Yeah, this is how the channel started out. Maybe from some of y'all old hats, you might have been there from day one. Uh, we're really excited to be back. And we have a really good series of games to go through. This is the first round of Canadian Nationals 2023 uh, East Coast Edition. Yep. This is the Nationals that the Metchball Grid, as a channel, we put on here in Montreal. Currently, this is shot at the Silver Goblin, our local game store here downtown Montreal. It's a great venue. I love I love that store. It's got a great, like, brightly lit air and air conditioned space. It's a lovely space. All I really could ask for, but it, it always impresses. Yeah, no, absolutely fantastic space. So this was at the end of August, just about now it's like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We had about 40 players come out from all across Canada, from the States as well, uh, trying to, you know, figure out who's going to be the Canadian national champion. So yep. We're going to have the whole narrative unfold in front of you today. <laughs> Again, this is the first day. It was a two day event. And on the first day we went through, technically it was meant to be 10 rounds of single sided Swiss. So right. each opponent only plays one side. It's a 40 minute round. So slightly different than some of the old videos that are on this channel. But we did eight rounds of single sided Swiss on that first day mm -hmm. and then did the remaining two of single sided Swiss the next day before switching to the top eight cut. Yes. So it's a lot of Netrunner, all of that stuff. We have one table of at least recorded that will be up on the channel across the next, I think it'll be about a month or so. So be patient with us here and this is round one so these players mm -hmm. entirely random who they were and um i asked specifically on the left here uh just getting his uh, his dragon uh, flesh and blood sleeves out this is diogene oh yeah a local player that you might be familiar with um pretty prolific a poster on Netrunner db yes a lot of great deck lists and a lot of great card reviews like I, I think he's got great insight into the game and i think a lot of people appreciate that about him a very specific and interesting deck builder generally wants yes. to play some of the cards that not a lot of people play not so not always trying to follow the meta, but trying to yeah. build something interesting. I'm really excited to see what he's bringing out. He's playing right now. This is Jinteki Personal Evolution. Right, a classic. A classic from the original 2012 core set. It says a net damage whenever an agenda is scored or stolen. Of course. And Jinteki PE has been really powerful over the last, uh, I would say the last competitive season. It's worth knowing that at this point, the Tomata Initiative is out. We have a new ban list. We mm -hmm. have a new set, a new rotation and standard. And rotation really hit some key Jinteki cards like Obakata Protocol. That was banned. It was still in rotation. Oh, it was banned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Banned. Yeah, exactly. But that's a huge card. We have mm -hmm. no more that five net damage card to steal, or that's uh, a huge boon to some of these grinder Jinteki decks, and that's right. gone. So I think we're going to see something different. Now, on the right, this is Liam. Liam, one of the father son combos at this event. <laughs> yeah. I think there was like three or four. Yes, I think three, three father son duos playing, and then yeah. one father son duo who just came to hang out, and we appreciate that. It's and I think he's playing with the quick tracker up top there that I think his father built, uh, Andre built. Yeah. Yes. I and love that's, that thing. Look at that. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. That's been on the channel, I think, again, like maybe seven years ago. So it's still working just a fresh set of batteries. Mm -hmm. Now, Liam is playing Lou from System Gateway, 40 card minimum if you want to go that way. And the first time that you trash a card that you access a turn, you get a draw card and gain a credit. Yes. So just forward tempo, maybe yep. not the Hoshikos we're going to be seeing a lot of throughout the event, right. but a kind of similar click compression ability uh, right. based it's, on value. It's a bit slimmer in the deck uh, construction than, mm -hmm. than Hoshiko is and probably going to be accessing a lot, trying to trash as much as, as he can. Yeah. Well, and, we'll yeah. There's a lot of new cards from the set. There's I'm excited to see okay, those. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, well, well, I think we see some up. in hand, so yes, we'll, okay. we'll get there. But it looks like we're off. Uh, Diogene does this really great thing with click tracking. It's a bit hard to see on the camera, but those tr they're, yeah. they're labeled click one, two, and three, mm -hmm. and he puts them around the table to make it very obvious where the clicks are going. Yes, that's so smart. I really appreciate that. I should do that myself. Yeah, I know. It's a great system. All right, so Mindscaping is our first the Automata Initiative card. I love Mindscaping. Yeah, we see this card across a lot of decks. You're going to see a lot in Jinteki. Just that flexibility to give you a bit of draw, a bit of economy. Just a lot of Jinteki decks need that. They're not rich on money. The card draw is also kind yep. of a niche thing. I, I think it totally works in decks that don't care about the second modal ability. Yeah. Like it's just a decent econ and filtering kind of effect that Jinteki, just specifically Jinteki like filtering effect. So we need to figure out what kind of P deck this is, whether this is the sort of war ride tracker, protect mm. the assets, the, the keeling is going to kill you. Keeling, exactly. But this maybe looks more like that classic Cambridge style shell, shell game. game. Exactly. Where some of these things you need to run, some of these things you want to avoid running because they'll be traps mm -hmm. and they will hurt you if you don't run the right stuff. Yep. You don't know what's an Urtica cipher, uh, cipher mm -hmm. yeah. uh, or what's an agenda and so on. And hey, that's one of the new cards, an AI called Ooh. Audrey V2. It takes cards from your grip to boost the strength mm -hmm. and then virus counters to break something. In Jinteki, using cards as a resource to Ooh. break subroutines is so scary. It's a risky play, but, but there's so much of the Automaton Initiative encourages that kind of behavior in, in our... Dirty laundry up the top. Oh, there we go. First axis of the entire uh, 
Canadian luckily, Nationals luckily of the Liam Snare. still had at least three cards in hand. Yeah, so that is going to be four credits for three net damage and a tag. A Snare, something you're going to assume is in most of these P decks because yeah, it does course. do a lot of damage. Fun enough, that's an actually relatively easy trash, so you only do two damage if you want to call it like sure. that. And, and one of those, oh, one of those was a Steel Sin Scarring from Midnight Sun. So which gets Liam uh, at least two more free cards. So he just cycled his hand if he wants to trash this, which is pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Losing a Contaminate and the new Bahia Bands, the, a very, very flexible card. We'll see how that goes. And trashing this will give you value on both your Audrey and your Lou, which is nice. Yeah. So we'll see how aggressive Liam's going to be here. Again, accessing, you generally want to be running into Jinteki earlier in the turn, which mm -hmm. was pretty good there. You still had two clicks left. So if you do hit a snare, you can clear the tags, which with Mindscaping, that is somewhat relevant still, even without splashing any sort of uh, out of faction tag punishment. Of course. Uh, we're, I think we're going to see the, the, the Audrey counter event eventually, you know. Clearing the tag. Yeah, clearing the tag. Again, well, Mindscaping is just annoying mindsca enough. Mindscaping does exist, yeah. yeah. You don't want to turn that into a neural EMP. Now, what can be on the table? Again, like House of Knives, that is House of the Knives most is a great one. scary thing. Stings on the table. Sometimes you want to steal them. Snare, but I would prefer to keep snares in hand or in the deck. Uh, yeah. Against Lou, where you think they're going to run centrals once a turn. The maybe maybe Ladderwort as just a, like a simple econ card that also occasionally does damage. There's the Audrey counter there. I'm also wondering how useful Audrey is going to be. Like, how much ice is this kind of shell gamey PE going to play? Yes. Not that I know for sure if it's a shell gamey PE. Yes. Um, I think it's not going to be running a lot of ice. So we'll right. see that Audrey does get used. Again, we talked about how using cards for hand as your breaker option is a bit <laughs> difficult. Uh huh. Uh, we're going to check before start of turn again. If that had a start of turn trigger, Rashida's any sort of econ option off the table, you'd fire it now. But it looks like with just three credits, that's a big break point. Four is huge into Jinteki because mm -hmm. that means that uh, Daijin, he can't fire another snare. So less than four credits, you're pretty happy to access you're on Central. Yeah. yeah. And it's all advance, advance, down okay. to one credit. Interesting. So Urtica Cipher doesn't require any credits to trigger. No. That's still, that's going to be a lot of damage if that is an Urtica Cipher. Yes. It's going to be two net plus two net. So I think, because Jinteki, more often than not, you always want to stay on the four credits just to be yes, able to Thren Snare. There's a big chance that's an NGO front. I think that's the only advanceable you're happy to go to low <clears throat> credits for, because that is eight credits. You're, click, click, you're click. never really at low credits. Yes, exactly. And sometimes the runner thinks you can't fire a snare. They run centrals, they get hit. <laughs> exactly, and that's very funny. Liam there, getting the gamble, getting some good economy in there. Nine mm -hmm. credits, so only what potentially could be one, but we could be surprised. And you want to make one run a turn. The question is then, you, when do you do it in the turn? Sooner than later, it gives you that more time to draw. Yeah. I want to say really quickly, because we didn't mention at the beginning, that first Mindscaping, the first card that was played was a photocopy. I just oh. want to put this out there for players who maybe are getting into the game or new to the game. Yeah, this is super important. Proxies are legal at all levels of play. You can download the PDFs from Null Signal Games' own site and print them out and cut them up and put them with like a magic card in the back. Yeah. Put in an opaque sleeve like like a Diogenes God. And yeah, you, are, you can go to tournaments. You can win tournaments with photocopied cards and everyone is going to be happy with that. Yo, buy a bands R&D. This is such a cool card. We're getting the clickless card draw for mm. the trash. It is an it NGO, is front. NGO front. A card that's very ubiquitous within standard format. Yep. Really works well with these sort of mitosis decks. Things I want to install advanced advance. As much as the mm -hmm. runner runs, it doesn't really punish them in any way. It does kind of offset your credit. So now you can afford Doesn't your front work with mitosis? Yeah. I, will, I will check later. Yeah, it does, oh, it does, because okay. you're allowed to res it on the next turn. It's oh, okay. different Am than I thinking of Mushin? Uh, Mushin, yeah. Mushin, of course. Now, four credits of trash stuff, and we're going to find a Ooh, bacterial, bacterial off the top. So, bacterial programming, it's got a lot of text. Yeah. Uh, Daijin's going to be able to filter the top seven cards of R&D. And do whatever he wants with them. Do whatever Literally he wants. Put whatever them trash, he wants. Put them in HQ, put them back on R&D. And, of course, doing one net damage, uh, which I think should happen it's after. It's his choice of ordering. Oh, it is his yes. first order? Oh, because so, they're both corp triggers. Yes, so the corp can order any of the when scored abilities. Mm -hmm. So P is when scored. That did take out uh, from hand uh, Dirty Laundry, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. The buy bands it was just two credits to draw two cards and make a run. That's click compression as much as the second mode on it didn't actually matter. Mm -hmm. And so now Diogene's going to go into that tank, look at seven, decide what to do with them. Yeah. Sometimes you just see seven go to hand, which can be really scary if this is a punitive Counter-Strike build because mm. you can draw a lot, hit your digital life into double punitive. That can be a problem. Yeah. So we'll see what he chooses here. I did see a lot of bacterial programs into your digital life yes. event. Yes, <laughs> it's a really cool combo. And this is the sort of card that's finding more slots in these Jinteki decks because mm -hmm. specifically, while Fuji is maybe in this deck, I would be surprised if it wasn't. Without Obakata, there's a bit more, uh, you know, leniency in what sort of 5-3s you're excited to play in a Jinteki deck. Exactly. Normally, Jinteki's, uh, Jinteki PE wants to play a lot of, a, a, a larger number of smaller agendas yeah. with maybe one slot for 5-3s that are like probably the Obakatas or the Fuji. So this is already kind of interesting to me. Yeah, three, and I am curious if he's digging for a punitive. Three points is here. Is big. Again, we always joke how when the bacteria goes up, you have a lot of time. You can maybe walk away, go get a sandwich, yeah, come back. Because seven's water a lot. boiling, put on a tea. Yeah. yeah, exactly. 
Seven's a lot. I think there was two maybe added to hand. You can trash any of these, you can put them back. Putting them back is really important. While there could always be a snare on top at this point, mm -hmm. you also know that for the next, say, five turns, the runner running R&D might be, I wouldn't say useless, but they're not going to find an agenda. You can make sure the, the agendas are safe. Exactly. The corp knows exactly when to protect R&D and when not to, yeah. which I think is very, very powerful. Barring a shuffle effect. Um, right. So we'll see how that uh, affects Lou. I think Lou so far has fired on not so much this turn. We'll see if that affects how aggressive Liam is going to be. And it looks like we are going to poke that first server. That was out on turn one. Yeah. Keeping track of how many cards in Liam's hands is really important. Oh, no. Are we running HQ? No, I think it's just the okay. run server there. So off the top there, it's a Reaper function. That's a good thing to trash. So this means on the table, if the Reaper stays and just one other agenda, heaven forbid a sting, that's mm -hmm. four net damage. Yep. <laughs> you res the Reaper, do two, advance, advance a sting, it does one plus one. So diesel uh, to diesel. Drop, of course. Good card draw in terms of getting cards in hand. And they, we mentioned this at the top. I don't think this is going to be a grinder matchup. I think mm -hmm. you're going to see flatline by burst. Not so much that you have to be precious about how many cards you play. Right. If you played against competitive PE maybe a season ago, a couple months ago, you were considering not playing your sure gambles. You're considering mm -hmm. not playing your dirty laundry. Because they're better as hit points than they are yeah. as econ or as breaking ice or something like that. And so I think it's a dip, bit different here. It's more so making sure you're running at the right times, running the right thing, which is a huge question mark. Yeah. And at least ending your turn with cards in hand. Another mindscaping, cool. This is interesting. Uh, no tags here, so we're going to be definitely drawing through the cards that we knew what they are. Mm -hmm. So you can set up your hand, keep things safe, put something on top, but just a minor economy card. I always frustrate with mindscaping when you then draw the card that you put back the next turn because it feels like a loss of it, tempo. It doesn't feel great. But we'll see if there's a spin doctor or a shuffle effect on the table yeah. as much as it keeps R&D safe with a deck that yeah. seemingly doesn't have a lot of ice so far. But in reality, the card that was on top of R&D was a complete unknown until you saw it. And you just have to like accept that the universe doesn't respond to your pity. Okay, you don't. Know, yeah, no, no, I get it. You're uh, kicking me under the table. <laughs> <to> stop. <laughs> Something back there on top of R and D. Yeah. Up to eleven credits. This is the punitive turn. Now with six credits, and I think Liam now has a healthy amount of cards in hand, considering yeah. he just diesel off. I don't think Punitive's going to be alive and well right here. Uh, Lou doesn't have Link. I don't think any of the new NSG cards no, have Link on them. No, not since I think. I, that sounds about right. And uh, yeah. The other thing is like. A tempo punitive doesn't make sense because you know that Lou is probably running a, like strike fund and more steel skins. So yeah. you don't like a punitive attack like that. Uh, sorry, a tempo attack might not matter at all or might even uh, help their game plan. Yeah, tracking the steel skins is important. We've seen one so far. You can see in Diogen's hand there is a neuro spike. Cool. So you're pretty sure that there's going to be a play line, which is something about install double advance of Fuji, for instance. For sure. And if you can get some click compression by like trick light, seamless, continue to advance it, you Look can score. Grid, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can score Fuji into a neuro spike and it does six damage. Yeah. Wow. That flatlines most runners if they That's don't run the right. one damage from the ID, two yeah. damage from Fuji, the agenda, and three damage from the neuro spike. Like, one, two, three. One, two, three. As long as you don't hit a steel skin. Right, uh, because that that comes in waves. So yes. you might hit a steel skin, which frustrates the map. You want to do the smaller into the larger. Exactly. I guess classic traffic accident scorched earth strategy. Something here is on the table. Top of R&D's known ice on HQ here. So understanding what the ice is in the deck is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, there's some really scary face checks. Things like a big old Anansi, Anansi could be rough. Course. Botchless, though, coming down, so that's only going to be one separate team this turn, getting Still a virus risky. token. Yeah, yeah. there's some risky face checks here. At least in a panic, mm -hmm. you have two counters on your um, on your Audrey. So if yep. it is a giant Fair. spider, you're going to go through. It is going to be two cards from hand? I think so, it's yeah. a bit dangerous. Uh, that could also be Tattoo Bola, one of the new cards, and that would really frustrate that Botchless, but yeah. that's... Yeah, it's so good into Trojans. As <laughs> much as that's a hard card if you don't have a lot of ice in yeah. the deck. I think Liam's going for credit. trying to decide if it's worth running okay he's on five he's thinking about running it again r&d is open but the corp knows here i think this is last click running last click is so hard in this matchup because we hit a snare all right we are confirming a run on hq yeah this is potentially quite a risky run here the res is an anemone and so not only is this going to confirm two net damage and i'm pretty sure diogene will discard a card from hand mm -hmm. that kind of carves your hand so if you're holding like four cards and one of them's a snare, suddenly it's a one and three on the snare. Oh yeah, true. So this you can really determine yeah. what the runner encounters because you're discarding from HQ. And even if it's a Fuji, like you have to steal the Fuji. It's mm -hmm. not Obakata Protocol that has an additional cost. So yeah. that suddenly becomes two damage plus two damage plus one damage. I think that could be a flatline here. There's some really risky runs. Running last click is very, very difficult in the Yeah, Kentucky. very much so. So something's going to be discarded. That'll be two net damage. That happens first. You, they happen at once. It looks, looks like, like we must contaminate. contaminate a virus card and a twinning. Multi-axis sometimes can be difficult into these sort yeah, of Yeah, it's kind of risky. You don't want to touch two snares in one go. 
And I reckon we're going to botch this through that. No need to use the Audrey so far. So that seems to be some of the minimal ice in the deck. Something that can just do confirm that damage. And yes. three cards here. Okay. Axis, that's a spin, spin doctor. doctor. That's a good trash for Lou. Really good hits for Lou. I think Lou's yep. been firing pretty consistently. So that goes down. That gives you two triggers of your... Audrey triggers the card and credit. Yeah. So that gives you that card draw. Getting that like clickless compression card draw is actually really good in this matchup. Very much so. And there's a lot of things to seem to trash in this matchup. Trashing an Urtica, replenishing your hand, like all this of stuff course, really yeah. adds up. Uh, yeah, it, it gives you a little discount on the damage you're going to be taking a lot of. Yeah, but definitely intimidating run there. That actually might have been only third click. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, so, we've got one more click to worry about. I think we've seen hand there's a Maw. Interesting card to get down. Pretty expensive with this board state. We're going to mm -hmm. see how Liam can generate some more credits. But here on the table, two cards. Now, hmm. unadvanced cards have a lower threshold of what they can be. Worst case scenario, again, is something like a Sting and or combination with Reaper Functions. Yes. Otherwise, these are the sort of cards you have to be worried about. Install Double Advance, because it can be Urtica. Okay. <laughs> it could be Urtica. can be a Neural Spike setup. Mm -hmm. And then Clearing House is another big one, which is just two house, damage yeah. at the start of turn. So you can do Clearing House into Reaper Function, into yeah. Sting. That's six damage. If you don't run the right stuff on the table, again, money willing. Right. I think but you need do six see, credits. We do see a Steel Skin in Liam's hand right now. Yeah. Really, so really important. If things work out, then that is going to be the lifesaver. Yeah, two prepaids, a steel skin, and a maw. So you don't want to play that steel skin. You always want to keep it because it's your safety valve. We're coming down with a prepaid voice pad. Okay. So that is the engine that probably combines well with a lot the of twinning. Econ. It's some econ. You want to play an event to turn. True. Sure. That fuels the twinning because it is a hosted credit. Yeah. And twinning likes hosted credits. Oh, playing the steel skin. Ooh, playing so, it the hard way. Well, not that hard when you have a prepaid. It's yeah. It's like build your own diesel. But that <laughs> is the one card in the matchup you definitely want to keep in your hand. Absolutely, because, it, because that is the safety valve. Yes. It's, That's going to frustrate the, the corp when they try to ping you like in, in like a thousand cuts. Yeah. Especially if they you know you clicklessly draw when you run yes, into stuff. Course. So we'll see how that. That works on the matchup. Clicking for a third credit here. Looks like a bravado in hand is a consideration. You have to run an ice server. So that means we're going to be running HQ last click again. Some Ooh. very risky lines here. Mm -hmm. I'd argue three points up. You're more worried about what's on the table. But again, if you hit a snare here or you hit something really big like a Fuji, this could okay, easily bravado be Bravado last click. Okay, we're going again. Anemone is just one subroutine. Just two cards in hand. What are one the of them could easily be a snare. Be it's a snare. <laughs> of course it's a snare. Now you're feeling a bit rough Ooh. not having that steel skin. So you're going to end your turn with maybe only one card in hand. Now, the big upside here is that mm. Diogene's only on two credits. So he actually can't, can't score an agenda on the table. Can't res a Reaper function. can res a Reaper, yes. Unless that's an NGO. If that's an NGO into Reaper, this could be a flatline here. You're also floating a tag. We've seen two Mindscaping so mm. far. So if there's just like, you know, the end of the line that sometimes shows up. Just take one net damage, yep, of course. Now, if you do trashes, you draw. That's huge. Again, we talked about how Lou into this matchup is pretty important. Okay, so two cards at the end of the turn then. Yeah, a that's seven. a fair bit safer here. But with only two credits, there's a lot of board states which this can easily be lethal. It just credits right now. And economy yep. is not a thing that you attach to PE. I, I'd love to see a bladder wart right now. That yes. is my favorite uh, <laughs> uh, econ for PE these days. Okay, what do we got? Big Match money, draw. nothing res so Nothing far. resing at the start of the turn. So here, we just need to get money. An NGO front would be huge. Clicking for credits is totally acceptable. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, these Shinteki decks will like swing between just clicking for three credits is fine on this board state, and then next turn, you install two things. Yeah. You install a double advance. Again, a big thing about this is understanding the difference between what advanceable traps can be and what never advanced traps can be. Yes. On the table, I'd be surprised if we see a snare. I think Diogene's holding him in hand, and there you go. Click for three is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Because that's, this board fact, state That's a still, classic PE strategy. Yeah. Click for three, wait for the runner to make a mistake. Because this board state potentially is still lethal if you don't so. run the right stuff. Yeah. And we have to remember, like, Urtica Cypher is a free two credits. Yeah. Uh, whereas snares, you kind of want to keep in yeah. hand and, and in R&D as much as you can. You talked about free credits. The only other one that is worth remembering is Cerebral Overrider, which does cost three. Three does trigger. Core yeah. damage, yeah. So when the Corp has two credits, you're still weak to Urtica, weak to check a sign potentially. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but you, you can run a lot more with a lot more uh, confidence. Now yeah. there's the tag. It was forgotten. Uh, I don't think it's okay. going to matter. No resources, two Mindscaping's out. Mm -hmm. So Liam's just going to start by clearing that with some of the bravado money. Sure. We need to keep cards in hand. We're only holding two. It looked like one of them is an imp. The other is a Friday, Friday chip, chip, I think. Yeah. yeah. So might throw the imp down here and get an access again. A lot of times a play pattern to these decks, the safest play pattern is run early and then just redraw and set yeah, yeah. up. Yeah, just keep your, keep your hand up, run maybe yeah. once per turn. But Liam's taking some much more aggressive, I would argue much more risky lines. So mm -hmm. far it's been doing okay for him. But that's two credits and solid imp, just two buyer's counters for trashing whatever you want. That means that anything you trash again will be card draw. It doesn't have to have a cost in the corner. You can, yep, trash, you can operations. trash operations. Depending on the agenda, you can trash an agenda. So we'll see here whether you want to go open R&D. Open R&D it is off the top. Okay. 
Yeah. Only one card in hand. So many lethals here, but Urtica. Wow. <laughs> you could pay two if you want, or you can use one of those imps. Again, it comes with two virus counters on it. We'll catch up with that. I have no doubt. Yeah, so. this feels like a like an imp counter. Yes. Probably. I love how Imp is a soft econ card in these decks. <laughs> yes, me too. It is two card draw and two credits for two. You can get it cheaper, and that's a Lou. So now we have two cards, but again, so many lethals there. Fuji would have been lethal. Snare would have been lethal. So very, very risky lines here by the runner. Exciting Netrunner, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, I, I'm tense. I'm shaking. I can't speak. Two cards in hand. Looks like, like two Maws? A Maw and a Friday Chip, I think. Oh, yeah, Maw and Friday Chip. Just click for credit. Two cards in hand. Okay. Inside of his and hand, there are two we'll mods. Click for credit versus a card in hand. That can be the huge difference here. Diogene, if he has something on the table. If Diogene can do three damage, then this game is over. And PE very likely can. Just clearing house into anything. I'd like. I'd even like to see a... It's a clearing oh, house. Yeah. Clearing house for two damage. Two damage. Now, Diogene did his mandatory draw first. In theory, you have to fire this first. Right. I don't think it's going to matter because I don't think he's going to play a card in hand. It should just mm -hmm. be off the table. But that puts him to no cards in hand. If there's just any three advancement agenda on the table, that's it. And advance, advance, advance. Sting there we go, Sting. Sting. I was hoping for a blood in the water, maybe, but Sting is just as good. Hey, we go. good game to both players. And we are off the beginning <laughs> of Canadian Nationals. There we go. You love to see what the What a stings. great first game of Canadian Nats. Uh, yeah, this is really exciting. I love that Liam was being so aggressive. Oh, uh, Liam brought this plain white deck box that he yes. got everyone he could to sign it. <laughs> that actually uh, signs so big on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, of course, that's, that, that's his right as the first yeah. uh, uh, winner. No, this thing was absolutely covered with um, with signatures throughout the whole event, which is really cute. Yeah, I got my signature on there. It's pretty happy, too. But yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see both these players at Canadian Nets. Like, Diogene, obviously, one of my favorite players. It wasn't Urtica Cypher on the table all the yes. time. On Advanced uh, Urtica, you don't see it often, but just no, but free two damage. free two damage. Yeah. That could be just enough to trigger it. That's great. Uh, and happy to see Liam here, too. Like, Liam's been showing up to Silver Goblin, our Monday night yeah. weekly events every uh, uh, recently. Uh, very happy to see him here. This is a great game. Like, th I think there are lessons for people playing against PE. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't need to be this aggressive. He, and you he definitely need to keep your card, just your hand up. driving it down the paint. Yes. And at the last turn, if he drew one card, I still think there's a flat line there. Because there was four damage on the table. Yeah, very likely. So as much as sure. the click for the credit might, you know, you might want another card in hand. I still mm -hmm. think Diogene gets him through that. Absolutely. Uh, but that's it again, round one. We're going to have more rounds coming up throughout. We have Swiss rounds to go through. Again, Pat, thanks so much for joining me. Of course, I was happy to be here. And we'll be right back. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Ciao. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me tell you, it's an absolute treat to be back to our roots here on the channel, recording some tabletop gameplay. That's how we started. This channel has been around for, I think, eight years now. And that's how myself, let alone a lot of other folks, got into Netrunner. So it's a real fun to open up some of those project files on an old hard drive and see just how absurdly disorganized everything was. So we'll do better this time, I swear. Now, this sort of editing, all this sort of stuff, it's incredibly time intensive, and this would just strictly not be possible without the generous support from all the patrons of the channel. So here you see a lot of the names from the folks uh, from the Sure Gamble tier and from the Degree Meal tier, but there's also a lot of folks helping support the channel at the Daily Cast tier. And I promise you again, this stuff would not exist without your very kind support. So thank you so much. We have a lot of more gameplay coming down the channel. Again, we have 10 rounds of Swiss, and then we have a top cut from that point forward. We're trying to drop about two a day, so we'll see you on, I believe, Saturday morning, maybe Sunday morning, and we'll try and do that cadence going forward. If you like this sort of stuff again, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend, and we'll be back in just a couple days. Cheers.